All right, good morning. There is something that I think needs more discussing, uh, and certainly a lot of people have said I need to discuss it more, which is, you know, I never thought I'd have to make this video, but here we are, and I want to make sure that everyone understands that it is essential if you are owning Bitcoin, the hardest, most scarcest asset that for the first time in human history, you have the ability to bear in your own hands or in your own mind, kind of, that you actually take possession of the asset. Unfortunately, a lot of people, especially the people that are w uh, watching my videos, and this is why I thought it was you know important for me to say something about this, you're used to the broker holding your stock portfolio. You're used to the management agent managing your property portfolio. I was as well. There was one time where a, a tenant called me at 11 p.m. at night and said that the, the light bulb in the bathroom had gone out and he wanted me to change it. And I said, there's bulbs in the, in, the, in the closet. And he says, my contract tells me I can't make any, I can't do any of that, right? It was a silly contract, which we then changed. So um, I had to drive at 11 p.m. at night to, to go change this damn light bulb. And that's when I realized that, you know, he had a baby. He could have waited for the management agent the next day, et cetera, et cetera. But he had a baby, so I went there, changed the damn light bulb, and realized that, you know, like, this, this wasn't for me, right? Real estate and all that management stuff wasn't for me. So after that, you know, no tenants had my phone number or, or any, any, any of my contact details. They didn't even know who I was. They didn't see me. They didn't know me. They didn't hear from me, anything. Um, but the main thing is, is in that scenario, you know, imagine uh, something had happened in that, in that uh, example with that tenant and the management agent wasn't available until the next day. So my asset was completely at the hands uh, of everyone else besides me. Whereas with Bitcoin, it's the first time in human history we have actually have a scalable asset. An asset, you know, because like watches are bearer instruments. What I mean by a bearer instrument is that you actually bear it. It is an instrument, like a watch, that I can actually bear. I can actually hold. The ownership is dictated by who holds the asset. And Bitcoin is the first time that we have a scalable asset that you can actually have as a bearer instrument, right? You can, there's a lot of little assets like gold. You can hold a little bit of gold. You can hold, you know, a few watches. You can do all that, but how far can it scale, right? Whereas with Bitcoin, whether you have $10 of Bitcoin, whether you have $1,000 of Bitcoin, whether you have a billion dollars of Bitcoin, it is possible for you to bear the asset. Now, the people that are watching my videos, you're probably going to, you know, feel comfortable with the idea of a of an exchange or an authorized party that custodies your Bitcoin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's fine because that's the world that we come from. That's the world that I'm used to as well. But Bitcoin is the first time that you are actually responsible for the security of your wealth and it's a beautiful thing to do so even if you are planning on holding the etf or holding micro strategy stock or holding any of that it's very very important to learn about the idea of self-custody and put it into practice on some scale because you never know what can happen you never know look at what happened with this guy with this guy sam bankman fried right he had the world's biggest exchange you know He's buying out, putting his name on arenas, putting his name on supermodels, putting his name on, on everything while going on YouTube, on stupid YouTube shows, talking about how, you know, he just wants to make money so he can give it away and change the world and all this other shit. You know, one of my mentors told me when I was very, very young, he said, if someone's intention is purely philanthropic, you should never trust them. Never, ever trust them. Because, you know, I, I, every, every human being is selfish. And I can trust someone's selfish desire. But how can you trust someone's completely, purely philanthropic desire? Right? It, it just doesn't work. It, I, I, I can't ever see a reality or an example where that's the case. And by the way, you know, the fact that we're talking about this, that we're getting, you know, Bitcoin out to an audience that is used to more traditional assets, is why I need you to subscribe. Because... 
if you if you don't subscribe, then YouTube basically doesn't know that people more people need to hear this. The faster you subscribe, the faster it tells the algorithm that you you know I need to push this video out to people that are interested in real estate, interested in gold, interested in all this other stuff. So please, please, please subscribe. It's extremely important. Now, the 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 very the very fact that Sam Bankman Freed, you know, who had this offshore exchange, et cetera, et cetera, um, and was or was out here buying, putting his name on arenas, putting his name on supermodels, putting his name on all this stuff, and everyone's bowing down to this retard Sam. You know, it, it, Bitcoin and Bitcoin maxis, Bitcoin maxis were the only ones that were going, this guy's an idiot. Just remember that. Bitcoin maxis were the only one going, this guy's an idiot. And now you've got CZ who's now who's up next as far as I'm concerned. Hey, look, we can talk a little bit of conspiracy here, okay? So imagine, imagine that you were the U.S. empire, okay? Imagine you were in charge of the U.S. empire. And Bitcoin was about to become a major player of your economy overall like of your investment economy overall you're creating all this favorable regulation mining everything else do you really think that you want if you're part of the america if you're like the deciding factor of the american empire you want an offshore exchange run by a chinese national you really think that's gonna you really think that that is 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 a viable solution I think CZ has two options, right? Whether he wants to admit it or not. Number one, he's either going to get destroyed, right? Because I can, you can pretty much destroy an exchange. I don't care what his uh, risk parameters are. If I'm focused and I've got the entirety of the U.S. financial empire behind me, I can destroy his exchange in a, inside of a year. So it's either that option. Or the second option is, hey, CZ, join the fold, right? Bring everything onshore into the United States. Join the fold get rich, get under control, okay? So you got two options there that CZ is going to have to take, um, and, and we'll see which one he takes, right? But if he, doesn't, if he doesn't get under control, you know, he's out here talking about the same shit that Sam Bankman-Fried was talking about, which is, oh, I just want to make money to take care of the world. I don't need no money, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I, don't, I don't trust that. I don't trust anyone's pure, I don't trust anyone's purely philanthropic needs. So based on that, you just don't know what's going to happen to these exchanges. And now you have an asset, which for the first time in history, you can actually take possession of. So it's very, very important that you learn about that. It's very, very important that you study taking possession of Bitcoin. It's very, like, for example, for me, I had to learn, you know, like right now, my, my multi-sig setup, again, you need to know what multi-sig is, right? My multi-sig setup um, I got to fly to three countries in order for me to move any Bitcoin that I own. And if I buy any Bitcoin, it automatically gets purchased and sent into that contraption. And so I can never even move my Bitcoin until I fly to three different fucking jurisdictions. So, you know, you need to learn about these things. You need to learn what, you know, a cold wallet is. You need to learn what a hot wallet is. You need to learn when it's appropriate to have Bitcoin on your smartphone. You need to learn when it's appropriate to have a multi-signature wallet. Like I, I use Casa, um, but you can use Unchained. You can use all these other, all these other uh, services. It's appropriate to know when each one of these is viable and useful for your needs. And most importantly, it's important to know that you can actually have an asset that can scale to millions of dollars and just have possession of it. That's extremely powerful. That's the whole point of Bitcoin. The whole point of Bitcoin is to take the, the power of the control of the asset away from the centralized institutions, right? And now that's, you know, it's different. I've been saying this since 2021, when I, well, 2020, in fact, in private and 2021 in public. Most investments are not bearer instruments, so therefore Bitcoin will also not be a bearer instrument on, on the long tail of the curve because people are just not comfortable with it. But if you're watching my videos, I think it's extremely important that you figure this out. It's extremely important that you figure out how to take self-custody. So if you ever need to, you don't need to think twice, right? And you don't need to take self-custody of billions of dollars of Bitcoin. You don't, it doesn't need to be that scary. You can play around with $100 of Bitcoin 
and and learn about self custody learn about which wallets to use learn about you know um, what's the difference between a ledger a treasure and a cold card or whatever new ones uh, there are coming out learn the difference what's the difference between you know um, the wallet of Satoshi with lightning and blockstream greens wallet right you need to know these things. You need to speak to companies like Casa. You need to speak to companies like Unchained. You need to speak to these people to understand what services they can provide, why there is benefit in taking possession of your Bitcoin. So I think it's extremely important that you do this. I think it's extremely important because you never know what's going to happen with these exchanges. Sam Bankman Fried, and now it's coming out that in his, in his, uh, in his court case, that he was selling out from under people their Bitcoin in order to suppress the price of Bitcoin. You just don't know what the hell's going on. Now, saying that, I don't want to scare people because the fact is, is that, you know, if you're using Coinbase and a lot of Bitcoin Max is going to hate me for this. A lot, a lot. Of, I, I can already feel it. I can feel the hate coming through the camera right now. If you're using Coinbase, you're probably going to be okay. Right. You're probably going to be OK. Why is that? Because Coinbase is a U.S. registered exchange. It is falls under the laws of the United States securities laws, commodities trading laws and just overall financial markets laws. It is also going to be the custodian and the processing arm for all of these ETFs. So Coinbase is under more scrutiny than any of these other, you know, small exchanges Oh, small. That's that's not the right thing to say. All these other fringe exchanges like Binance, for example, Coinbase is much more stable than than anything else. Coinbase has a lot more parties that are relying on it than anyone else. So it has to play a different level. So you're probably going to be OK. And I don't like the idea of everyone saying, oh, you shouldn't use Coinbase. Coinbase has the lowest fees and there are there are, you know, fringe exchanges that have come up by trying to say you shouldn't use Coinbase to buy Bitcoin because, you know, they, wanna, they, want, they want you to, to believe in the happy hippie shit uh, and use their, use their exchanges. And I get that. It's a business strategy. I completely understand. But Coinbase has the lowest fees. And as long as you're not a moron, which means that you own, you understand what you own. Oh, I own the hardest asset humanity has ever created. And now because Coinbase sent me an email because it's in their incentive that I trade it and they want me to buy Dogecoin, I'm going to exchange the hardest asset ever known to mankind for some Do Dogecoin because Coinbase sent me an email. As long as you're not that moron, there's no, there's no issues using Coinbase. We can argue about their business practices, but it's been an exchange up to now. Their job is to basically provide the ability for people to speculate and take a fee off of that. That is their business model. We can argue about whether that's right or not, but that's their business model. They still have the best processing, in my opinion, on Bitcoin. Now, I don't store any, any of my Bitcoin on Coinbase. It's all on cold storage. Like I said, it basically gets bought and then gets funneled straight into my cold storage uh, three jurisdiction contraption. But I still use Coinbase, right? Coinbase is the easiest onboarding process out of out of anyone so it just is what it is if you're anywhere in the world and you don't you know the, the main goal for me is to get you to one bitcoin all of this other stuff is 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 after the fact but i think it's very very important that once you understand that you need bitcoin because I, you know the, the one thing i don't want people to do and why i don't really talk about this too much is i don't want you to get scared of cold storage and then not buy Bitcoin and wait for the ETF. I don't want you to do that. I want you to buy the Bitcoin. Worst case scenario, you store it in Coinbase. You speak to Coinbase and you have, you know, all of their different security protocols put into place uh, for your account and you store it securely on Coinbase, right? As that happens, you then go learn about cold storage. Once you get comfortable playing around with a few hundred dollars of Bitcoin on cold storage, you can then decide whether you want to move your Bitcoin off of Coinbase onto uh, a cold storage setup or not, right? This is how it should work. You should not be panicking about cold storage and then not getting exposure to Bitcoin. I don't want, I don't want that to be the message here, right? I know there's a lot of that message coming around, come, going around, and I don't want my message to be that message. My message is very simple. You need to get to one Bitcoin. Until you get to one Bitcoin, you're, you're, you're basically risking the future of your, of, you know, you're, you're basically risking the future. That, that's all I'm going to say. You're risking the future. So, and, you know, again, you might be asking, okay, cool, teach me about cold storage. I'm not the guy. 
I'm not the guy. I can't remember the last time I even studied cold storage. It was when I was buying Bitcoin, setting up my, setting up my three country contraption, uh, three jurisdiction contraption, and that's it, right? That's how powerful Bitcoin is from my perspective because I can do it, set it, forget it, right? Three rules of Bitcoin. So, the here's what I would recommend to you, right? You start buying Bitcoin any way possible. Just make sure the way that you're buying it is the most secure way possible, right? Use Coinbase, use all of their facilities to secure your account. Use Gemini, use all of their facilities to secure your account. Use US, ideally US-based exchanges. And then once you've done that, go learn about cold storage and different wallets and stuff like that. And who would I do that from? There's only one person in my mind that I would do that from. And that is BTC Sessions on YouTube. Ben from BTC Sessions on YouTube. I think he's the best. I think he's the only one that has basically a video on every single uh, cold wallet, hot wallet, warm wallet, mild, lukewarm wallet that you would want to, to look for. I think he has the best tutorials. He's the person that I learned from how to, how to understand cold wallets. If I ever want to understand a new cold wallet that's coming out or whatever, I go straight to his YouTube and I watch it there. I'm not even going to pretend to be a cold wallet storage expert. I'm not that guy. I'm the why guy. I'm the guy that's here to help you understand why you need to own Bitcoin. Because despite all of this cold storage, warm wallet, you know, hot wallet stuff that you need to learn, there are still only three rules to Bitcoin, which is step number one, you got to buy Bitcoin. You got to get to your one Bitcoin. Step number two, you shut the fuck up. And step number three, you get fabulously wealthy.